may be wondering who the fuck is Tim Blake and why is Bane arguing with him on the Twitters about some guy called Garrett. Well, I'm about to explain that. Tim Blake is a New Zealand feminist who goes by the name of Demotivator Opinion on YouTube. And he's very good friends with another New Zealand feminist. There seems to be a lot of them on YouTube from New Zealand for some reason. Uh, And this one's name is Garrett now any regular viewers of my channel would have seen my series of videos responding to Garrett and that's what Tim and I were arguing about. You see Tim seems to be under the impression that I've got some massive vendetta against uh, Garrett even though half the time in those videos I give Garrett credit for getting something right. But you know you actually have to watch the videos to, to see that and Tim Blake here admits that Garrett hasn't actually watched them uh, before passing judgment. Yeah, it's probably the best way to judge something, right? Is to avoid it altogether and not watch it and just just come to some conclusion in your mind what it's about. Because that would probably be correct, right? (laughs) And this is why fucking echo chambers are fucking cancer. Now, just in case you think that uh, Tim may have misquoted Garrett by mistake or somehow got it wrong or something, here's a collection of quotes from Garrett himself.
<laughs> you know, I, I really couldn't give a shit if Garrett uh, has respect for me or not. I really don't care because I, I don't have respect for him because he lives in a fucking echo chamber. All right. What, what kind of person, what kind of individual doesn't watch something but passes judgment on it anyway? And just assumes that they know what it, what it's about. And then tries to take the moral high ground somehow. Somehow being intellectually superior than those evil MRAs, anti-feminists, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, he did get some advice from some of his unnamed friends who quite possibly didn't even watch the videos themselves. I mean, who the fuck knows, right? So let's address some of his claims real quickly before moving on to the next point. Why are the videos so long? Why is there so many hours of video talking about Garrett's videos when his videos are, are rather short? I think his two videos in total are about 30 minutes or something. So why so many hours responding to 30 minutes of video, Bain? And the answer is really fucking simple. Some of these claims take a long time to unpack. For example, uh, the claims about domestic violence. Now, going from memory here, Garrett said something about uh, male victims of domestic abuse should be acknowledged and helped. And I gave him credit for that. Fucking fantastic, Garrett. We're on the same page, mate. We're on the same team here. He then went on to say something from memory about uh, it, it not being the fault of feminism or anything like that. So what I did is I went back over the last 15 or 20 years looking at the changes in the law, why the law has changed, how the law has changed, what effect that change has had on men and women who are victims of domestic abuse. I went through the law in detail. Actually, I went through the different laws because the laws have changed in the last 15 or 20 years. I gave examples. I gave reasons why some of these things are good and some are bad. Now, I could have just made a two-minute argument with no evidence or no citations, no examples, just, you know, blurted out an opinion, right? But then Garrett would have said that I was talking at my ass and wasn't proving my point or something like that, you know? Now, I know I can be detailed and I know my videos can be fucking long, but that's because I like to dot every single I and cross every single fucking T. And typically, I don't leave any wriggle room for people like Garrett to come along and pull my arguments apart. You're more than welcome to try, Garrett. A tip, though, you may have to actually watch the fucking videos first. But by all means, if you think I've made a mistake or strawmanned you or, or lied or done anything like that, by all means, please make a response. I'm more than happy to listen to critics because I don't live in a fucking echo chamber like you. And once again, let me stress, echo chambers are fucking cancer. They breed ignorance and stupidity. The type of ignorance and stupidity where someone just assumes what the other person's argument is without fucking listening to it. And this is why people like Garrett and Demotivator Opinion are fucking jokes. They really are fucking jokes. And unfortunately, the punchline isn't funny. It's just fucking sad and pathetic. Not to mention fucking cowardly. I'm happy to have critics. I'm happy to look at what they say, and I'm happy to address those critics. I've done it in the past, and I'll do it in the future because I'm not afraid of having my arguments challenged. I put truth above ideology. It's not a fucking religion. It's not something I have to have faith in. And if someone comes along and proves me wrong, I'm more than happy to change my opinion. Because I don't live in a fucking echo chamber. But apparently I have some kind of vendetta against Garrett which is fucking laughable. I mean, if you look at the last video in my Garrett series, I spent almost half of it giving praise to those feminists who are actually fighting against the sentencing gap. 
and one of them was Garrett. Apparently, that's having a vendetta against the guy <laughs> by giving him credit when he gets something right and spending almost half the video acknowledging the good points on his side. Fucking incredible. It really is fucking incredible. The sheer fucking ignorance of those who live in echo chambers is fucking astounding. And once again, Garrett made these claims just the other day to a very good friend of mine whose name is Little Miss Anonymous. Hello there, YouTube. So Garrett got into a bit of a discussion. We'll call it a discussion and not an argument uh, with Little Miss Anonymous uh, in the comment section of one of her videos. <laughs> and and uh, Little Miss Anonymous uh, referred to him as Princess, which I, I just found fucking hilarious, especially when Garrett then tried to own the term. He took it as a compliment. So uh, maybe we should start referring to him as Princess from now on. I don't know. I mean, you know. But this conversation eventually went to private messages, which for obvious reasons I'm not going to show, but the conversation did turn to me. And I feel it's only fair that I address those those things said about me, even though they're in private. So apparently, apparently I hate Garrett with a passion, which is uh, news to me. Uh, if he actually watched my series, he would know that's not true. And uh, and apparently my videos are longer than the extended edition of Lord of the Lord of the Rings. That may actually be true. <laughs> that one, that one, I I may actually have to give to Garrett. He may be correct. I, I wish they were making as as much money as the Lord of the Rings, but you know it's more about the message than the cash, isn't it? So, and apparently I was obsessed with Garrett. Now the funny thing about my obsession with Garrett is if you actually watch my videos, I know Garrett's incapable of doing that because he's capable of making up his mind about something without actually watching it. But if he if he had have taken the time to actually watch just one of those videos, he would see that the vast majority of the video isn't about him at all. The vast majority of each and every one of those videos is talking about the issues which he brought up. Not about Garrett, but about the fucking issues that he brought up. They're the things I go into great detail about. Alright, the sentencing gap. I break down exactly what the sentencing gap is, how it works, who it affects, why it happens, who is supporting it and who is against it. And I mention Garrett a couple of times. Apparently, that is being obsessed with Garrett as opposed to talking about the fucking issues. But of course, Garrett doesn't know this because he lives in his nice, safe little echo chamber, tucked away, safe from the evil anti-feminists who are just out to get him, apparently. <laughs> it's so fucking hilarious. And apparently, apparently my videos are through an ideological filter, which you could argue, you could argue in fairness, that everyone is guilty of this. If I'm guilty of it, then everyone is. But, if you actually watch my videos, I think you'll find they're fucking fair. I acknowledge the other side when they get things right. I've no problem with admitting when my opposition gets things right. That's being fucking honest. But, you know, you, you would actually have to take the time to watch the videos to know that. I know, it's, cr it's a crazy concept. Absolutely fucking crazy concept. To actually uh, only judge something after you've watched it. How insane is that, Garrett? And it seems when talking to Little Miss Anonymous, uh, Garrett also mentioned the sceptic feminists. What? Now, I'm actually friends with Russian Deadpool, and I know some people watching this will have an issue with that. They will say, Bane, how can you actually be on friendly terms with a feminist? And the answer is simple. I don't want to live in a fucking echo chamber, because echo chambers are fucking cancer. 
And there are many issues, many things, that I agree with Russian Deadpool on. We don't agree on every single thing. There are some issues we strongly disagree on, and probably will always disagree on. And you know what? That's fine. I don't have a problem with that, because I don't want to live in a fucking echo chamber. I'd actually like to socialize and know people and talk to people who hold different opinions, even if those opinions are polar opposites of mine. And do you know why? Because I don't want to live in a fucking echo chamber. And I'm not afraid to have someone challenge my opinion. I'm not afraid to have someone offer an alternative opinion. And I'm not afraid to listen to it, consider it, and possibly change my mind. Unlike Garrett, for example. Now, even though I'm friends with Russian Deadpool, I've held him accountable in the past for things he has said and done. And I will continue to hold him accountable for things he says and does in the future, regardless of the fact that I'm friends with the guy and I get along with him. He gets no special fucking treatment. And you know what? Neither do I. If I say something which is wrong or incorrect, I'm more than happy for him or anyone else to correct me because I don't live in a fucking echo chamber. And as my good friend Little Miss Anonymous has said to me numerous times, being proven wrong is a good thing because it then allows you to correct yourself and become right. And at the end of the day, that's what I'm interested in, having a correct fact-based opinion, not living in an echo chamber, not worshipping ideology, but having a correct opinion based on evidence and reason. If I surrounded myself with people who just had the exact same opinions as myself, that would be a fucking echo chamber. And echo chambers are fucking cancer. But let me give you another example of someone I'm friends with but don't agree with on everything. Someone I've known for years who I consider a good friend, and that's Dean Esme. So when it comes to gender politics, Dean and I are on the same fucking page, right? There's probably nuances that we disagree about, but generally speaking, we believe the same thing. We agree in the, on the same things. However, when it comes to religion and atheism, uh, we, we don't exactly see eye to eye, and that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem socializing and being friends with someone who holds a different opinion. I'm not afraid of that. And echo chambers are fucking cancer. So I have no problem chatting with Russian Deadpool. I have no problem discussing things with him or debating things with him in private or on air. And I have no problem challenging him or being challenged by him. And I honestly don't know why some people have an issue with that. But I can tell you now, I'm not afraid of that. In fact, that's what I'd like Garrett to do. I'd like Garrett to come out of his fucking echo chamber and talk to me. <laughs> Actually listen to my opinions and maybe, you know, challenge those opinions, right? To answer any fair criticism that I've leveled at him. To actually consider another viewpoint and maybe respond to it. And who knows, maybe I've got something wrong and he could actually correct me. I don't have a problem with that. But you know, that actually takes the guts to come out of your fucking safe space, out of your echo chamber, and listen to the other side. And Garrett can't do that. Russian Deadpool's got no problem with it, and I respect that. I don't agree with the guy on everything, right? There are some things we strongly fucking disagree on, but I respect the fact that he's willing to listen to the other side and fucking talk to us. And he's also willing to criticize his own side as well. We here at The Skeptic Feminist have a history of calling out bad ideas. No matter liberal or conservative, atheist or religious, feminist or anti-feminist, to get more specific, we have a history of calling out child rape sympathizers. A brave and shocking position. I know. We stood against Milo Yiannopoulos, a conservative Christian anti-feminist for his defense of pedophile priests. We stood against Amos Yee, a libertarian atheist for his advocacy of baby rape 
And now we stand against fellow liberal and feminist Foxy Jazabel for playing apologetics on behalf of a convicted attempted child rapist. The rapist in question was prolific in the YouTube feminist community before we joined a year ago. This video is not about him. The following is a Twitter exchange between Foxy and our very own homicidal Harley. So this video by the skeptic feminists and the, their follow-up video sparked a bit of controversy with Garrett and Tim. And uh, I'll be having a look at that next episode. So let's have a quick listen to Tim and Garrett talk about the drunken peasants. You know, <laughs> but the rest of it was just them complaining about us mentioning the weather. So that was some deep coverage. I mean, they, they, their, <laughs> their coverage of things is not exactly uh, compelling. Yeah. Be like, hi, I'm a feminist. Like, oh, God. Oh. Let's watch exactly 55 seconds of this and judge the entire thing. But like she lost me when. She <laughs> oh, the irony! The irony that Garrett is complaining that someone only watches fifty-five seconds of something, and then passes judgment when Garrett doesn't watch anything at all yet passes judgment. It's <laughs> it's just so fucking funny. The irony is fucking hilarious. Well done, Garrett. Well done. Well done for pointing out what a what a fucking massive hypocrite you are. Well done, mate. Well done. Well, you need just one more excuse. 